The kind of mislabeling we're talking about in this study is substituting one species of uh, fish for the type that you ordered. Like say you ordered red snapper, but you got a different type of snapper, or even another completely different species such as tilapia or rockfish. Some of the most troubling substitutions we found were for species that can really cause health problems. Um, uh, the, our prime example was we found Escalar substituted for something called white tuna sold in sushi venues. 84% of the white tuna was actually Escalar, which is something that can cause acute and serious digestive effects if you eat more than just a couple of ounces. The FDA advises that it be labeled as Escalar and not sold, so it's interesting that it is being sold. And more troubling, it's being sold as white tuna, so people don't even know what they're getting. The most commonly mislabeled types of fish in our study were snapper, 87% of those were something else, and tuna, where 59% were something else as well. Apart from being cheated, many consumers can't choose their fish wisely based on conservation or health concerns. Two of the fish that are on the FDA's list of fish that women of childbearing age and young children are not to eat because of high mercury concerns, king mackerel and tilefish, were substituted for grouper, halibut, and red snapper. Oceana found that one-third of the samples, over 1,200 of which we collected, were mislabeled across the country. We found seafood fraud wherever we looked. Whether we tested in Boston, Los Angeles, Seattle, or Florida, everywhere we looked for seafood fraud, we found it. In the United States, we import more than 90% of the seafood that's consumed here, yet less than 1% is inspected specifically for seafood fraud. Some of the seafood substitutions that we found in our study were a less expensive, cheaper fish was swapped out for something more desirable, like tilapia for red snapper, um, catfish for grouper, or farm salmon for wild salmon. Our goal at Oceana is to ensure that the seafood sold in the United States is safe, legal, and honestly labeled. Oceana is working with Congress and the administration to require traceability for all seafood sold in the United States. Traceability is tracking your fish from boat to plate. Seafood fraud is an epidemic, uh, and it is a fraud on the consumer. Uh, and it actually is also something that hurts legitimate fishermen who are playing by the rules. So if there's an Asian catfish that only costs a buck a pound that is being marketed as Chatham Haddock uh, in Massachusetts competing against something that costs four dollars a pound, then the fishermen who are doing it legitimately off of the coast of Massachusetts are being harmed and the consumer is being harmed. So we just have to put an end to this by really putting tough stringent laws on the books. This issue is important to me because Massachusetts consumers are getting ripped off by paying more than they should, uh, and they are not getting the fish which they ordered. And at the same time, fishermen who play by the rules in Massachusetts, they're also being ripped off. If it's um, uh, bogus bass or shady shrimp that are being marketed as the real deal, when in fact they're something that is completely uh, a, a knockoff a product that doesn't have the same quality, then Massachusetts is being harmed, the consumers are being harmed, the fishermen who play by the rules are being harmed. Seafood mislabeling is already illegal. The problem is that the penalty is only a slap on the wrist uh, if any of these companies are apprehended. And so we have to ensure that we stiffen these penalties so that the penalty has a razor blade sharp edge to it uh, that says to any company, that tries to engage in this kind of activity, that they are going to pay a very high price. All you have to do is look at the product that we have. We have some incredible, uh, obviously Alaska king crab that you know is well known around the world, but now we have a whole bunch of Russian king crab coming in claiming 
to be Alaskan, mislabeled even in some cases, or farmed salmon claiming to be wild caught salmon. And so all this salmon product or king crab is impacting Alaska by depressing the prices or also diluting the market out there. And maybe if they get bad product and they think it's Alaska product, then they stop buying it. So it has a direct impact. And not only for us, but nationwide, who people are depending on what they are buying is what they're buying. The challenge is obviously, you know, when we deal with our seafood product, we have multiple layers of review and, uh, and agencies that are part of it, making sure what you're buying is what you get, that it's been handled properly, that it's safe, and when it hits the marketplace, that the person who buys it knows it's clean, safe, and really, in lots of cases, sustainable too. There's several pieces, but the one that I think is the most important is, uh, call it boat to plate, making sure that when that fish is caught, or that we would like to say hey, Alaska king crab caught, uh, that when it comes from the boat and it moves through the process from there to the wholesaler, to distributor, to the retailer, to the consumer, there's a, a record that's keeping trace and track of that all the way through the process. So if there's ever a question, at the end of the day, the consumer says, was this really Alaska salmon, Alaska crab? there is a traceability all the way back to the boat. That to me is probably the best way the consumer is sure what they're getting, but also all the people who purchase in between. They know that it's certified Alaskan crab, Alaska salmon coming from the oceans of Alaska. The most important is that the consumer knows what they're getting and they know it's quality, healthy, safe, and the fishermen on the back end are getting fairly treated. Once you remove the head and the skin from a fly, it's very difficult to tell exactly what species you're dealing with. One of the problems we're facing is that there's over 1,700 species of fish that are commercially available in the United States. And it's very difficult for the end user to know exactly what they're getting when so many species are very similar. Seafood fraud is taking place because there's an opportunity to make a lot of money for a dishonest individual in, this, in the supply chain. If you can sell a $4 catfish fillet for $20 a pound, that's pure profit for the dishonest person. Three things consumers can do to protect themselves are ask questions, check the price. If it's too low, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And get the whole fish when available. And then you get the whole picture. If you put like a white piece of snapper beside a white piece of tilapia or grouper or tilefish, uh, most people are not going to be able to discern between the two.
Thank you. Golden brown skin. Key results.